Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Chef Isabel and I'm with Curate Food Service and welcome to episode one of what I'm calling the sauce series. Curate's inventory has a very lengthy, um, amazing sort of collection of eth ethnic sauces and I wanted to take some time to put a highlight on not only how those sauces are actually engineered and be able to share with you guys how to make those sauces and how the thought that we put into those sauces when developing them, but also um, how to use them a little bit differently and how to have some fun with them in ways that you might not think. Um, so anyways, without further ado, we're going to go into week one. We're going to be making an orange peel sauce. Think orange chicken, Asian um, stir fries, things like that. The reason I wanted to show how this sauce is engineered and share with you guys sort of the backstory is because, yes, there's a million great orange sauces out there, but what I was mostly interested in with this sauce was that you actually taste the notes that we made a point of putting in there. You taste notes of clementine and apricot and there's a great balance between the heat and the sour and the spicy. So um, it's just a great sauce. It's super simple to make, but I just think the time that's taken developing the sauce, it's worth the share. So I'll stop rambling and we'll start making it. So anyways, I have a cup of freshly squeezed orange juice in here. I'm gonna go right into a small sauce pot. I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of white sugar, quarter cup of brown sugar. Hopefully without spilling any. There we go. That was close. This is going to be a quarter cup of dried apricot that I've actually sort of julienned. Fortunately, I don't have any clementine, don't really have any access to clementine during quarantine. If you want, I might even um, subtract half of the orange juice for clementine juice at home as well. That would give it some great different notes. I'm gonna go in with two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. And that's just gonna provide a little bit of a different acid to the sauce, aside from the orange. Now we're gonna go in with a quarter cup of soy sauce. Just happens to be the rest of my bottle. I think it's fate. And then we're gonna go in with a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Again, it's up to you if you like it a little bit spicier. All power to you. Now, the tricky part. Well, not necessarily tricky. A little bit of love needs to go in here. Once I find a place to put my pot. Ginger. So it kind of looks like a mangly mess, but it's honestly really easy to clean and really easy to use. It breaks no problem. And honestly, the best way to clean it is just taking a spoon and kind of like rubbing it like this. It comes off in no time. So I'm gonna do this, and then I'm actually gonna grate in just about one tablespoon into our sauce. and add it in so what I'm gonna do now is actually just put this on like a medium medium high heat just for about like three to four minutes really just to get the sugar to dissolve um, and then we're just gonna prep the rest of the sauce okay so the next step in our sauce is just to prep out a few more things we're gonna zest um, one whole orange here um, always being careful with any sharp objects Whoop! run away a nice thing about this orange sauce too is that it honestly keeps really well and you don't need a ton of preservatives um, like most of our most sauces in the world. Um, there's so much you know sugar in it and the acid. Those are just natural preservers. So if you cool it down correctly, it'll actually keep for a few weeks up in your fridge. You just have to cover it correctly. Very handy. All right, done so. Awesome, eat that for a snack in a minute. So the last step is gonna be to make a slurry. So if you know what a roux is, so a roux is flour and butter heated up on the stove and then you make a paste sort of out of it and that thickens like bechamels and cream sauces and things like that. Slurries are similar, except it doesn't get heated in the process of making necessarily the slurry. The slurry is just purely, I have a tablespoon of cornstarch here and I'm gonna add in 
right around two tablespoons of water just to make a thick paste. So the celery is not actually cooked, um, like I said, during the process of making it. It's cooked when you're added to the ingredients. So the crucial steps when adding a slurry into anything is to continue the cooking process because if you don't, that slurry is just going to sort of sit. So you need to make sure it's really well incorporated. Cornstarch obviously gets a little sticky. You want to make sure it's really well mixed. And then when I go to add this, I want to stay actively at the stove, stirring it until the sauce is at the thickness that I want. So my slurry is all set. That's been going for about a minute. We're going to get all set and ready and start to add our zest into our sauce. Forgot to mention, when you're heating up your sauce for the first time, you want to make sure you're not reducing it at all. There's a, um, not a lot, but a decent amount of soy sauce in there. When soy, soy sauce cooks down, it gets super, super salty because it's sort of concentrated. So make sure you're not reducing it down at all. It's purely just to um, melt the sugar and sort of combine everything. And then we hit it with the rest of the orange. So my sauce has started to bubble here and you can see it's starting to steam a little bit. The sugar's all dissolved. So I'm going to go in with my first ingredient, the orange zest that we've added. Just sprinkle that right in and then going straight into the cornstarch. Make sure you give it a good stir on the bottom and you get it all incorporated. And now's the time you really wanna babysit your sauce and make sure you stir consistently until you get the texture that you're looking for. So I've been stirring for about two minutes or so and I'm noticing that it's getting a little bit viscous and I'm reaching a texture that I'd like. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. I took my sauce off the heat once it was all combined and I got to the thickness that I wanted. I knew it was the right thickness because I was using my wooden spoon. I used the back of it, got the sauce on, and then I just did the finger test. And if you know, if there's a nice clean white line, white line, wooden line, you know it's gonna be all set here. Perfect. So from here out, I put it in my glass dish and I actually let it get to room temperature first just because if you cover, cover things and try to cool them too quickly, the acid in it actually reacts kind of funny. You get sort of like a metallic-y taste. So let it come to room temp, then throw it in the fridge. And like I said, it'll last um, a couple weeks up in your fridge um, just because of the acid and the sugar in there. But that's pretty much it. Like I said, there's a lot of different uses for it. I dip mine in chicken tenders because I'm still four years old. Um, I use them on my glaze on my turkey burgers. Um, it would be great on like a salmon or like a, like a shrimp skewer maybe. That sounds really good. Um, but yeah, have some fun with it. Let us know what you're making. Um, make sure you tag in the kitchen with Curate. You can reach out to me or anyone at Curate Food Service with any questions on this product if you're looking to order it. Um, but otherwise, let us know what we got going on and we will see you for episode two very soon. Bye guys.